All right, so today I am back, and today we are going to start the reviews for um, something that was actually requested. So we're going to start with the uh, Lord of the Rings. It's the Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, but we're going to start with the uh, Hobbit: Unexpected Journey. Uh, I couldn't. I actually haven't been able to track down the um, special edition, um, the extended version. So I'm a little irked about that. Um, so, uh, eventually I will. These movies, I, I think they're the director's cuts that make it to theatrical are actually less of a movie than the real movies, and we'll get into that later. Um, but for, so today we're going to start with The Hobbit Unexpected Journey. Um, so this is the first of the prequel, or prequel tri trilogy, um, being The Hobbit, which really kind of it, it does confuse me a little bit and I'll, I'll show you why um, here's why this is the hobbit yeah it's a, so a softback version but this is the hobbit <laughs> this is the lord of the rings uh <laughs> This gets made into three movies, and this gets made into three movies. Little, little irritated about that. This this should have been a lot longer, I think, because uh, if, if you actually read the Lord of the Rings, it's actually six books in there, so it should have been six movies. Uh, anyway, um, so unexpected uh, journey was uh, the first installment. Um, we get to meet all the main characters um i think they got the actor they got uh the cast for bilbo does an amazing job everybody in these movies does an amazing job there's not a single person in this movie that i sit there and say well he's a bad actor um radagast the brown kind of made me go eh, not too thrilled about him uh, but that was the character, not... Yeah, especially with the bird shit. It was the character, not the actor. Um, now, what Peter Jackson did in here... Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I have read The Hobbit. Um, was add in the Azhog, the Defiler part. Um, and it, it made sense to me that he added that in. Um, the way he added it in. The fact that they... Um, Azhog and his crew were hunting Thorn and, and company. And um, that's why they had to take refuge in Rivendell. Because it does say that they didn't want anything to do with the elves if they didn't have to. Um, they didn't trust them. So why would they go willy-nilly into Rivendell? Um, so it was kind of cool to add that dynamic that made it like, okay, they do have to go in there. Um, and I did like that. I enjoyed that. Um, I think the Azhog the Defiler was a great addition to this movie because he was a great villain. Uh, and just to let you know, uh, in case I haven't already, but major spoilers ahead. I don't hold anything back in any of my movie reviews. It's just straight up, this is what I'm reviewing is this movie. Um, but yeah, it, it was, it was I, I thought that was a great add-on uh, at the beginning. Um, you know, it also kind of hints at the dragon at the beginning. Um, kind of glimpses the scenes of him destroying everything, which was cool. Um, uh, I thought the... Uh, I mean, everything in this movie was done really well, um, I thought. Um, the, the scene when Bilbo meets uh, the d company of dwarves was awesome. Um, he really he really pulled off the awkward like I don't want to be rude but you guys need to leave you're interrupting everything that is about me <laughs> um, and it, it was fun the trolls were great um, it, 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 they're just fun characters to watch and and yeah it just uh, oh probably my favorite part was Goblin Town going down you know, I get stuck in Goblin Town. That was great with the big oaf goblin king and um 
Yeah, that's actually how I've always imagined Goblin Town to look. So it, it was just perfect. Although I always thought goblins were green, but maybe that's because I'm a Spider-Man fan. And Lord of the or, and D and D always had orcs and goblins green, and Warhammer always had orcs and goblins green. These ones were like pale, so I don't know. Just me, but I thought that was great. Um, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, in, in Goblin Town, um, let's see, Riddles in the Dark was great, um, and then, the, then they get out of Goblin Town, uh, and, and like I said, I mean, it was just exactly how I imagined, aside from the, the last little bit when they're on the thing that's sliding in between the mountains, and then the goblin, dead Goblin King falls on top of them, and it was just kind of, I was like, okay, um, but yeah, when they got out, you know, it, it, the whole scene was good, except for that ending. I thought that was just, I mean, they added that, obviously they added that in to be a little childish. Uh, and that's okay, because this, it, it was a children's book, so. Um, um, let's see, after they got out of Goblin Town, then they get trace, chased by... As hog again and again uh in the book it was the goblins from the mountain they were so mad at um the dwarves and gandalf for killing uh the king that they they wanted to chase after him so they so you know they they get on their wolves and start chasing after him but in this one it was as hog that um the goblin sent word to Azhog that, hey, we've got the dwarves here. Uh, why don't you come by and uh, take take them off our hands? And Azhog's on his way. And then after they get out the other side, Azhog's like, oh, well, now I've got to kill this these guys myself. So he chased them down on his wargs. And, again, it was it was a very, I, I thought, fitting addition um, for it. And then, you know, you get the almost confrontation between Thorin and Azhog, but Thorin gets beat up by the war before before anything else really happens, and then the eagles come by and save the day. And that's that's pretty much where the movie ended. Uh, oh, um, we also get to see Radagast um, investigating where the giant spiders and Mirkwood were coming from, and he ends up at the um, Dolgodor door. I, I have a hard time pronouncing these these things, but he ends up at that old fortress and discovers that the necromancers there, and what he believes are the ring wraiths, and he and this is all just added into this. This was never in the book of the Hobbit. I think it's mentioned in the appendices. Uh, sorry about that. So anyway, it's, it's Christmas. People are <laughs> coming and going. Um, so anyway, he. Uh, um, we got Radagast, and he comes across the Witch King. He doesn't know what's going on, so he goes uh, goes down to finds Gandalf, tells him what's going on. Gandalf goes finds Elrond and uh, the um, Gladriel and Saruman show up, and they have a council meeting, and they're just like, "No, this this isn't possible. The Witch King can't be back. They're he's sealed." Um, so again, that was something that was added into the, the movie that wasn't really in the books, and that was, I, I think, really a, a great addition on the dynamics of that of the movie. So all in all, uh, I really, really loved the first Hobbit movie, Unexpected Journey. Um, I, I just, I, I just think it it was just about the best version of that portion of the book that you could, I could think of. Um, my dog just farted. <laughs> it's kind of gross. <laughs> I'm going to play this video back before I post it and see if I can hear it. <laughs> that was pretty gross. Anyway. Uh, it, it was a great movie. Everyone did an excellent job in it. Um, I, I, and I was just ecstatic to get back into the um, 
the, the world that Peter Jackson had built around these characters and stuff. Um, and I really wanted to get the extended version um, so I can watch that one because I, I love the extended versions of the Lord of the Rings. And I got the extended of Desolation of Smog. Um, so, uh, you know, and this is a much better movie than the theatrical. And we'll get into that later. But, um, but yeah, it, it was great. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think I will give this one a uh, 9 out of 10. Now, nah, let's go 8 out of 10. It's good. It just it, it was a little slow paced at times, but that's how the book was. So, 8 out of 10. I think that's a fair reading. Um, but yeah, absolutely incredible. Um, a lot of fun. So, and then uh, tomorrow we'll be talking about Desolation of Smog.